And I'm going to be showing um, from the book of Isaiah, the 25th chapter, um, what God would have us to do in this season, what our approach should be, what our attitude should be, because what you get from every season is um, a combination of what God is giving and what you're doing. For example, God gives us rain, we produce food from, the, you know. So God gives us rain, we turn the rainy season to a farming season, then we get food out of it. But if God gives us rain and we don't go to farm, we don't take advantage of the rain, then all we will just have is rainy season and it, will, it might not result to food. So what we get from every season is a product of our response to the season. So, I'm going to be sharing with you some of the things that we ought to do. How should we receive 2025? How should we, what should we do? What spiritual preparation should we make as we um, get into the season? And then we're also going to see what the Lord will do as we respond uh, in certain ways to this season. Now, Isaiah 25, Father, in the name of Jesus, we trust you. Your word is true. Your word is life. Your word is spirit. Your word is powerful. And we pray that as we go into your word, that you will enlighten our eyes and give understanding to our hearts as we uh, ponder these things. And I pray, Lord, that you will interpret these words in the hearts of those who are watching this video and those who are listening to these things. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus Christ's name, I pray. Amen. Now we go to Isaiah 25. The first thing, the opening statement in Isaiah 25 is, O Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you. I will praise your name. O oh Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you and I will praise your name. Now, what this is saying is that this should be our resolve as we move into this year. It's like what Habakkuk said, you know, say, although the, 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 there shall be nothing in the barn, yet will I praise the Lord. He said, oh Lord, there is no contest about this. You are my God. In 2025, you are my God. In 2025, I will exalt you. And in 2025, I will praise your name. Now, so I'm not going to go with fear. I'm not going to go with uh with anxiety, I'm going to go with a focus on the Lord. That the Lord is my God. I will exalt him and I will praise him. No fear in my heart, full of confidence in the Lord God. Now, he goes on to say why, I mean, tell us why he will do this. I'll read that again. Oh Lord, you are my God. My God is my caretaker, the one I've submitted to, to take care of me. I will serve him and he will take care of me. You know, God said, I will be their God and they shall be my people. It, 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 you know, it's, a, it's, a con it's like it's a covenant. So when I say, you are my God, the Lord will say, then you are my person. <laughs> you know, so... Um, the one you make your God becomes your provider, becomes the one that protects you, becomes the one that preserves you, becomes everything for you. So when I say you are my God, it's like my whole trust is in you, my confidence is in you. I am I'm going to serve you with all my heart. I'll serve you with all my heart. I'll serve you as my Lord. I'll serve you as my God. And I'm leaning on you for protection, for provision, for preservation, for everything. You are my God. You know, sometimes people say, someone could say to another person, are you my God? That means you're just a human being like me. You're not my God. But we're saying, oh Lord, you're my God. I will exalt you 
and I will praise your name. Why? He said, for you have done wonderful things. Your counsels of old are faithfulness and truth. Verse 2, for you have made a city a ruin, a fortified city a ruin, a palace of foreigners to be a city no more. I will, it will never be rebuilt. Therefore, the strong people will glorify you. The city of the terrible nations will fear you. For you have been a strength to the poor a strength to the needy in his distress, a refuge from storm, a shade from the heat, for the blast of the terrible ones is as a storm against the wall. Now, so in these four verses, Sammy said, you are my God, I will exalt you, I will praise you because of things that are already behind. You know, it didn't start with, oh God, I want you to do this for me. I want you to do the other. He said, I will praise you because of things you already done. In verse one, he says, for you have done wonderful things. When we get into 2025, you will look back at 2024 and say, Lord, I will praise you for you have done wonderful things. You did wonderful things for me in 2021. You preserved me. You kept me alive. You helped me. When challenges rose against me, situations rose against me, you know, you were there for me. So I will praise you for you have done wonderful things. So we're not starting with what we want him to do. We're not starting with what, you know, where we want to go, all the plans, or just get, Lord, <laughs> you have done wonderful things. So we're beginning with praise, we're beginning with a focus, with gratitude in our hearts. It's not just prayer, with gratitude in our hearts for what he will do or what he has done. You know, of course, there will be prayer. I'm going to show us in a moment, you know, how uh, we can pray in this season, you know. And then in verse 2, he said, For you have made a city a ruin. You know, a fortified city a ruin. These are, you know, how what God had done to, uh, to, to, to the rebellious, to those who, who are not in alignment with his counsel and his purposes. So he speaks of a judgment. He said, you have, you have made a city a ruin, a fortified city a ruin a palace of foreigners to be a city no more. If you read Isaiah chapter 25, you will see, you know, at the beginning he said, Behold, the Lord makes the earth empty and makes it waste, distorts its surface and scatters abroad its inhabitants and all that. So that's much like, you know, what you're seeing in 2024. There's a shaking going on in different parts of the world. In places you would think that, ah, this can never happen. It's happening everywhere. It's happening everywhere. It's happening in Israel. Iran is seeing it. You know, it's all, we know about Russia and Ukraine. You know, in France, you are seeing the, you know, the protests in UK. You are seeing Bangladesh, in Nigeria. Different things are just happening. The nations, there's a shaking that is in nations. So when we get to 2025, we're going to look back and say, mm, Lord, you have made a city a ruin. A fortified city, a ruin, a palace of foreigners, to be a city no more. It will never be rebuilt. The, therefore, the strong people will glorify you. The city of the terrible nations will fear you. He says again in verse 4, For you have been a strength to the poor, a strength to the needy, in distress, a refuge from the storm, a shade from the heat, uh, for the blast of the terrible ones is as a storm. So, you know, so we, for the wonderful things that he has done, for, you know, the, 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 
the strong city that he has made a ruin, you know, delivering us from strong troubles, strong challenges, making a way there were, where there was no way. And he said, for, for being a strength to the poor, a strength to the poor. So in 2025, we're going to see the Lord is going to be strength to the poor. That's what we've been talking about, the strength to the poor and, uh, you know, strength to the needy in distress, a refuge from the storm. That's what the Lord is going to be for us in this. Now, you see, when you look at Isaiah 25, it gives you a picture of no trouble at all. God is going to take care of everything. But when you are, when you want to understand the Word of God, I mean, times and seasons from the Word of God, and understand the Word of God from a times and seasons perspective, when you read these things concerning a season, let's say, you know, you're reading about 2025 and you're saying, oh, you have been a strength to the poor, or a strength to the needy, and all that. Now, it gives you a picture, oh, the needy is not going to have any problem. The poor is not going to have a problem because the Lord is going to be their strength and all that. But often, God has a way of speaking. God, when God speaks, often he speaks the opposite of the reality because, you know, he, 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 he sees the end from the beginning. God sees the end from the beginning. When And God, you know, he is a faith God. He's a faith God. He's a wise God. So when the direction is this way, often he points in this other direction. And that's not fraud. That's his way. He says in Isaiah 55, he said, my ways are not your ways and my thoughts are not your thoughts. So it also means the way I communicate is not the way you communicate. The way God communicates is not the way we communicate. So God will call the things that do not exist as though they are there. <laughs> so the things don't they don't exist yet, but God will be speaking to them, you know, as if they are there. So that's that's the way He communicates. We speak to things that are that exist, things that we see, we talk to them. But God will call a dead man, will call dry bones as if they're they are not dry bones. Lazarus, comfort. Lazarus has been dead and buried for four days. But God is speaking to Lazarus. Jesus was speaking to Lazarus as if he was, you know, in the backyard somewhere. Lazarus, comfort. So God calls the things that do not exist as though they, they do exist. And God speaks the end from the beginning. And when God is speaking the end from the beginning, he often omits the process. God doesn't tell you everything. When he told Israel, I'm taking you to a land that is flowing with milk and honey, he didn't mention the wilderness. And so the people just had in mind, we are moving to a land that is flowing with milk and honey. So when they got into the wilderness and began to see no water, no food, it's like, what? Were we deceived? He said, we're going to a land where we make our honey. We can't even see water on the road. So God, when God communicates, he often takes out the process. Sometimes he can, you know, reveal the process, but often he takes it out. He takes out the process. So I'm taking you to a land that is flowing with milk and honey, and he does not mention the wilderness. Or he said to Abraham, Go to a land I will show you. I will make you great. I will do this. I will do that. I will do it. Whoever blesses you, I will bless him. Whoever curses you, I will curse him. He didn't tell Abraham he was going to contend with hunger in the promised land. When God showed Joseph that he was going to be a ruler over his brothers, he didn't tell him about slavery. He didn't tell him about imprisonment. He didn't tell him about those. So when God communicates, so it's important that we understand how God communicates because when God tells you, I'm going to make you rich, I'm going to do this, I'm going to prosper you, I'm going to take away all your troubles, I'm going to, and then you say, oh, you start rejoicing, then tomorrow something else begins to happen and then you're wondering, you know, the Lord said he was going to promote me, but I just lost my job, so... Wasn't that a false prophecy or something like that? 
When God is communicating his mind, he speaks the end from the beginning and he often omits the process. It's important that we understand that. Very, very important because many of God's people, you know, get to a point, they get so discouraged, they don't, you know, I don't understand. I, this is what they say God told me. The man of God said, you know, that God told him this about me, but then, you know, what am I seeing? That's what happens. When God was speaking to John, you know, um, Zechariah about John the Baptist, he never told him, you know, about Herodias about the persecutions that he will face. When God was speaking to Mary about Jesus, um, he didn't mention the cross. <laughs> he mentioned the cross. He will be great. He will sit upon the throne of his father, David. So, but what's going to happen before he sits upon the throne of, of his father, David? When David was anointed to be the king of Israel, yeah, anointed him and said, that's the next king. But nobody told him he was going to hide from cave to cave to save his life. So God often hides the process and communicates the end because he wants us to fix our eyes on the end, fix our eyes. The Bible talks about Jesus who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. So when we keep our minds on what God has spoken, then the pains and the pressures are, you know, are like... They are nothing to us. For the, the, what is ahead of us cannot be compared with the troubles that we're going through, Romans you know, says. So, so we praise God. Lord, you're my God. I will exalt you. I will praise your name. For you have done wonderful things. And you have made a great city a ruin, and you have been strength to the poor and strength to the needy in his distress. Now, if, when this becomes our attitude, you know, the reason many of the Israelites perished in the wilderness was not because there was no water. It wasn't because they didn't see food to eat. It was their attitude to the situations. That's what destroyed many of them. So sometimes, you know, in our world, you see trouble, you see lack, you see different situations, different challenges rise up. Many times, it's not what has come upon our nation that kills people. It's the fear. It's the anxiety. It's the lack of faith in God. The murmuring, the complaining, the bad attitude. That's what destroys people's lives. And so if we can get, you know, control of this and say, in this situation, Lord, you're my God, I'm going to trust you, I'm going to praise you, I am going to, I'm going to uh, exalt your name in my life, I'm just going to put my eyes on you, and I'm going to look away from everything. It doesn't matter what, Lord, I'm going to praise you. When does our commitment is already conditions a number of things, just con conditions so many things in us and around us. Now, so from verse 5, it begins to show us what the Lord will do. What the Lord will do. And I'd like you to put your eyes on this. What the Lord will do. Remember, when God is communicating and making promises, often the process is left out. But if you know how to read God's word, then you will understand that even the processes are included in what God is saying. It's just that it's not... <laughs> it's not made it's not uh made prominent but it's there okay it says from verse 5 he said you will reduce the noise of the aliens oh that means the aliens are going to make some noise there's going to be some noise but god is going to reduce the noise of the aliens as heat in a dry place as heat in the shadow of a cloud. The song of the terrible ones will be diminished, but that means the terrible ones are going to chant, they are going to sing, they are going to jubilate and all that, but God is going to diminish it. So it's already, you know, 
putting towards that. <laughs> the aliens are going to make noise in 2025, but the Lord is going to reduce the noise of the aliens. And the Lord is going to diminish the song of the terrible ones. In verse 6, it says, it says, And in this mountain, the Lord will make for all people, for all people, a feast of choice pieces, a feast of wines on the leaves, of fat things full of marrow, of well-refined wines on the leaves. And now, it says, the mind of God, remember, the 25th book of the Bible is called Lamentations. Lamentations. But the mind of God is not Lamentations. The book of Lamentations just simply shows us what the season can become when we are out of alignment with God. When we do not align with God in a 25th season, then it becomes a season of Lamentations. When we do not do the things that we ought to do, then the season becomes a season of Lamentations. So that is what this season is about. So the Lord wants us to know this is, this is what this season is about. So when we go to the book of Lamentations, we see what the season can become when we are out of alignment. But when we come to the book of Isaiah, we see the original intention of God, that God does not want you to starve. He doesn't want you to lack. He wants this year to be a year of feast of fat choice pieces. God wants you to have a feast of choice pieces in 2025. That's what God wants. He doesn't want scarcity for you. His intention is not, his plan is not lack. His plan is what is written here. And in this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all people, whether they live in Africa, live in Asia, live in America, live in Europe, live uh, in Australia, wherever they are, the Lord wants to make for all people, all people, all people, a feast of choice pieces. A feast of wines on the leaves, of fat things full of marrow, of well-refined uh, wines on the leaves. And he will destroy on this mountain, he will destroy on this mountain, and cast over all people. Whatever is going to, you know, so that means there's, there's going to be like a veil cast over all people. You know, just like what happened in 2020, the, the veil, the, the covering of COVID was cast over all people. It's a veil cast over all people. He said, he would destroy on this mountain the surface of the covering, cast over all people, and the veil that is spread over all nations. Every evil veil that is spread over all nations, whatever, you know, the covering that is cast over all nations, he's saying that God says, I will destroy that. But remember how we ought to enter. We enter with praise. We enter with a strong commitment and say to the Lord, Lord, you are my God. You are my God. My allegiance is to you. My loyalty is to you. You are my God. I will serve you. I will worship you. I will exalt you. I will praise your name because I'm remembering the things that you have done already. Those are in my heart. You have done these things and I remember them. And I'm going to praise you. Now, as we're in the midst of that praise, in the midst of that worship, in the midst of, of acknowledging God, then the Lord takes over. He begins to deal with, you know, the enemies of, the, of his people. And then in verse 8, he said, he will swallow up death forever. Oh, that means that death is going to come around, but God is going to swallow it up. 
death is going to come around. He said, but he will swallow up death forever. And the Lord will wipe away tears from all faces. Okay, so the tears are going to come first. And then he will wipe away tears from all faces. That's how you read it. If there are no tears, you don't need to wipe anything away. If there are no tears, there will be nothing to wipe away. So this is what the Lord is saying. So the Lord will wipe away tears from all faces. The rebuke, now remember now that the 25th book of the Bible is called Lamentations. There might be reason to cry, reason to shed tears, but the Lord will, this, it will end with comfort and we'll put our eyes there. And the rebuke of his people, he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. And it will be said, this is where we now come, it will be said, it will be said in 2025, it will be said in that day, Behold, this is our God. It will be said in 2025, Behold, this is our God. We have waited for him, and he will save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. He will, we will be glad and rejoice in his salvation. It comes again in verse 10. For on this mountain, on this mountain, the hand of the Lord will rest. Now against your enemies. He's talked about God is going to take care of you. God is going to make a feast for all people. God is going to destroy the covering that is cast over all nations. And God is going to swallow up death. And God is going to, uh, God is going to wipe away tears. That means that tears is not God's will for this season. But it may happen. Death is not God's will for this season. Scarcity and, uh, you know, suffering is not part of God's plan for this season. So that's why we see these promises. And every evil covering that is cast over all people, every evil veil that is spread over all nations, those are not the things that God wants. That's why he's going to deal with them. He's going to destroy the veil that is spread over all nations. Then... He says he's going to deal with Moab. Moab represents the enemies of his, of his people. Moab are the enemies of his people. Whatever, you know, harasses God's people, that becomes Moab. And he will spread out his hands in their midst. As a swimmer reaches out to swim, as a swimmer reaches out to swim, he will bring down their pride. The Lord will bring down the proud together with the trickery of their hands, the fortress of the high fort of your walls, he will bring down, lay low, and bring to the ground, down to the dust. That's what God will do to the proud, to the arrogant, to the treacherous. He will do this. So this is the plan of God as we move into 2025. But what are we saying? God wants us to begin with praising him. Oh Lord, you're my God. I will exalt you. I will praise your name for you have done wonderful things. For you have made a city a ruin. For you have been the strength of the poor and the strength of the needy in his distress. So we remember that God has done. You see, there is nothing as, you know, gratitude. Gratitude is the Lord. Gratitude. That we just come into the year and it's not about, God, I want to fly this year. God, I want to do this year. Lord, I want to build this. God, I want to get that. I want to get that. And we just submit all kinds of prayer requests, you know, asking from God. The key to this, gratitude must go ahead. It's not complaining. It's not murmuring. It's gratitude that goes ahead. We say, Lord, you are on our side. And then, you know. And so now God will do these things and God will eventually, he will deal with the proud, with the arrogant. So uh, what the Lord is saying is that 2025 will go well for those who trust in him. Keep your eyes on the promises. Keep your eyes on the Lord. Keep your eyes on what he wants to do. Keep your eyes. We didn't hear God will break your leg. God will do whatever. These are positive things that God you know, has brought. 
Yeah. Does that mean we're not going to we're going to pray? When you look at Psalm 25, you see uh, the whole of Psalm 25 is prayer. And I'm going to touch Psalm 25 in the next video to see how uh, Psalm, what Psalm 25 means for us as we enter 2025. The Lord bless you. Amen.